Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved, today we are going to study a very important book in the Bible that is from the New Testament, from the King James Version Bible, the Epistle to the Hebrews. The book of Hebrews, many Jewish believers have stepped out of Judaism into Christianity. Yes, want to reverse their course in order to escape persecution by their countrymen. The writer of Hebrews exhorts them to go on to perfection as we see in chapter 6 verse 1. As we study the book of Hebrews, let us pray. Yes, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, Lord Jesus Christ. Lead us and guide us. Thank you for giving us the Holy Spirit which will also be our guide. This prayer we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes, beloved, as we see that his appeal here is based on the superiority of Christ over the Judaic system. Christ is better than the angels for they worship him. He is better than Moses for he created him. He is better than the Aaronic priesthood, for his sacrifice was once for all time. He is better than the law, for he meditates a better covenant. He meditates, yes, a better covenant. He also mediates a better covenant, beloved. In short, there is more to be gained in Christ than to be lost in Judaism. Pressing on in Christ produces tested faith, self-discipline, and a visible love seems in good works. Although the King James Version uses the title, the Epistle of Paul, the Apostle to the Hebrews, there is no early manuscript evidence to support it, the oldest and most reliable title is simply Pros Ebraneus to Hebrews. Yes, beloved, as we study the author of Hebrews, the author of Hebrews, like the ancestry of the Melchizedek, the origin of Hebrews is unknown and certainly plagues not only in its authorship but also where it was written, its date and its readership. Yes, the question of authorship delayed its recognition in the West as part of the New Testament. Yes, canon in spite of early support by Clement of Rome. Not until the 4th century was it generally, yes, accepted as the authoritative of in the Western Church when the testimonies of Jerome and also the Augustine settled the issue. In the Eastern Church there was no problem of canonical acceptance because it was regarded as one of the 14th epistle of Paul. The issue of it also is canonicity was again raised during the Reformation, but the spiritual depth and quality of the Hebrews bore witness to its inspiration despite its, despite its anonymity. Hebrews 13, as we see in verses 18 to 24, tells us that this book was not anonymous to the original readers and they evidently knew the author for some reason, yes. However, early church tradition is divided over the identity of the author. Part of the church, as we see, attributed it to Paul. Others referred Barnabas and also we see Luke or Clement or some close and also some chose anonymity. 
the external evidence will not help determine the author internal evidence must be the final court of appeal but here too the results are ambiguous some aspects of the language style and theology some aspects of the language style and theology of hebrews are very similar to paul's epistles and the author also refers to timothy as we see in chapter 13 verse 23 however significant differences have led the majority of the biblical scholars to reject the Pauline authorship of this book. Yes, the Greek style of Hebrews is far more polished and refined than that found in any of Paul's recognized epistles. The second point, in view of Paul's consistent claims to be an apostle and also an eyewitness of Christ, it is very doubtful that he would have used the phraseology found in chapter 2 verse 3 which at the final yes at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him the third point the lack of paul's customary salutations which includes his name goes against the firm patterns yes found in all of his other epistles fourth point while paul used both the hebrew text and the septuagint to quote from the old testament the writer of hebrews apparently did not know hebrew and quoted exclusively from the septuagint the fifth point is paul's common use of the compound yes as we see titles to refer to the Son of God is not followed in Hebrews, which usually refers to him as Christ, Jesus the Lord. And also, as we see in the sixth point, Hebrews concentrates on the Christ present priestly ministry, but Paul's writing have very little to say about the present work of Christ. Thus, Hebrews appears not to have been written by Paul, although the writer shows a Pauline influence. The authority of Hebrews in no way depends upon Pauline authorship, especially since it does not claim to have been written by Paul. Terry Dulin referred to Barnabas as the author of Hebrews, but it is unlikely that the resident of Jerusalem, Acts chapter 4, verse 36 and 37, would include himself as one of those who relied on the others for the eyewitness testimony about Jesus, as we see in chapter 2, verse 3. Other suggestions include Luke, Clement of Rome, Apollos, Silvanus, Silas, Philippi, and even Priscilla. Some of these are possible, but we must agree with the third century theologian Origen who wrote who it was that really wrote the epistle God only knows. The time of Hebrews, yes, because of the exclusive use of the Septuagint Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament and the elegant Greek style found in Hebrews, some recent scholars have argued that this book was written to a Gentile readership. However, the bulk of the evidence favors the traditional view that the original recipient of this letter were Jewish Christian. In addition to the ancient title to Hebrews, there is also the ancient title to, as we see the Hebrews as the ancient title is frequently also used in the Old Testament as an unquestioned authority. The assumed knowledge of the sacrificial ritual and many contrast between Christianity and Judaism which are designed and present the 
it also prevent the readers from lapsing and into Judaism. Many places have been suggested for the locality of the readers, but this letter designation cannot be determined with any certainty. In the past, Jerusalem was most frequently suggested, but this view is hindered by four problems. The first it is unlikely that a book addressed to Palestinians would quote exclusively from the Septuagint rather than the Hebrew Old Testament. Second point, Palestinians, the beliefs were poor as we see in Romans chapter 15 verse 26. Yes, the believers were poor as we see in Romans 15 verse 26, but these readers were able to financially assist other Christians, as we see in chapter 6, verse 10. Third point, the residents of Jerusalem would not be characterized by the description in chapter 2, verse 3, because some would have been eyewitnesses of the ministry of Christ. The fourth point, you have not yet resisted the to bloodshed, yes. As we see in chapter 12 verse 4, does not fit the situation in Jerusalem. The majority view today is that the recipients of Hebrews probably lived in Rome. The statement, those from Italy, greet you in 13th chapter verse 24, seems to suggest that Italians away from the Italy are sending their greetings home. The recipients of this letter were believers, as we see in chapter 3, verse 1, who had come to faith through the testimony of eyewitness of Christ, as we see in chapter 2, verse 3. They were not the novices, as we see in chapter 5, verse 12, and they had successfully endured hardships because of their stand for the gospel as we see in chapter 10, verse 32 to 34. Unfortunately, they had become dull of hearing, as we see in chapter 5, verse 11, and were in dangerous and also danger of drifting away, as we see in chapter 2, verse 1, 3, verse 12. This made them particularly susceptible to the renewed persecutions that were coming upon them as we see in chapter 12 verses 4 to 12 and the author did find necessary to check the downward spiral yes with the word of exhortation as we see in chapter 13 verse 22 while there is disagreement over the specific danger involved the classic position that the readers were on the verge of lapsing into judaism to avoid persecution directed at Christians seem to be supported by the whole tenor of the book. Hebrews repeated emphasis on the superiority of the Christianity over Judaism would have been pointless if the readers were about to return to Gnosticism and hell and also the heathenism. The place of writing is unknown, but reasonable estimate of the date can be made. Hebrews was quoted in AD 95 by Clement of Rome, but its failure to mention the ending of the Old Testament sacrificial system with the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70 indicates that it was written prior to the date Timothy was still alive. As we see in chapter 13, verse 23, persecution was mounting and the old Jewish system was about to be removed, as we see in chapter 12, verse 26 and 27. All this suggests a date between AD 64 and 68. Now, beloved, let us try to understand the Christ of Hebrews. Christ is our eternal high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. He identified with man in his incarnation, offered no less a sacrifice 
than himself on our behalf. Hebrews present Christ as the divine human prophet, priest and king. His deity as we see in chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 and 8 and humanity as we see in chapter 2 verse 9, 14, 17 and 18 are asserted with equal force and over 20 titles are used to describe his attributes and accomplishment. Example, heir of all things and also as we see apostle and high priest, mediator, author and perfecter of faith. He is superior to all who went before and offers the supreme sacrifice, priesthood and covenant. Now beloved, let us try to understand the survey of Hebrews. Hebrews stands alone among the New Testament epistle in its style and approach and it is only New Testament book whose authorship remains a real mystery. This profound work builds a case for the superiority of Christ through a cumulative argument in which Christ is presented as better in every aspect and every respect in his person. He is better than the angels Moses and Joshua and in his performance he provides a better priesthood, covenant, sanctuary and sacrifice. Evidently the readers are in danger of reverting to Judaism because of the suffering they are beginning to experience for their faith in Christ. However, by doing so, they would be retreating from the substance back into the shadow. In addition to this positive representation and supremacy of Christ, the writer inter also interspurs five solemn warnings. Yes, as we see, he intersperses five solemn warnings about the peril of turning away from Christ. As we see in chapter 2 verses 1 to 4, 3 chapter verse 7 and also 4 verse 13, 5 verse 11, 6 verse 20, 10 verse 19 to 39, 12 chapter verse 25 to 29. These parenthetical warnings include cautions, yes, against the neglect. As we see in chapter 2 verse 1 to 4 and refusal as we see in chapter 12 verses 25 to 29. After using the Old Testament to demonstrate the superiority of Christ person as we see in chapter 1 verse 1 and 4 verse 13 and superiority of Christ's work as we see in chapter 4 verse 14 and 10 verse 18. The writer applies these truths in a practical way to show the superiority of the Christian walk of faith as we see in chapter 10 verse 19 and 13 verse 25. Now as we try to understand the superiority of Christ person as we see in chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 verse 13 chapter 4 verse 13 instead of usual salutation this epistle immediately launches into its theme the supremacy as of Christ even over the Old Testament prophets as we see in chapter 1 verse 1 to 3. Christianity is built upon the highest form of divine disclosure, the personal revelation of God through his incarnate son. Christ is therefore greater than the prophets and he is also greater than the angels, the mediators of the Mosaic law. Chapter 1 verse 4 and 2 verse 18. See also as we see in Acts 7 verse 53. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2. There is seen in his name his position, his also worship by the angels and his incarnation. Yes, the Son of God partook of flesh and blood and was made like his brethren in all things as we see in chapter 2 verse 17 in order to bring many sons to glory. Chapter 2 verse 10. Christ also as we see is 
superior to Moses. As we see in chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, Moses was a servant in the house of God, but Christ is a son also over God's household. Because of these truths, yes, beloved, the readers are exhorted to avoid the divine judgment that is visited upon unbelief, as we see in chapter 3, verse 7, and also 4, verse 13. Their disbelief had prevented the generation of Exodus from becoming the generation of conquest and rest that Christ offers is so much greater than what was provided by Joshua. The readers are therefore urged to enter the eternal rest that is possessed by faith in Christ. As we see the superiority of Christ's work in chapter 4 verse 14 and 10 verse 18, the highest priesthood of Christ is superior to the Aramaic priesthood as we see in chapter 4 verse 14 and 7 verse 28. Because of his incarnation, Christ can sympathize with our weakness, having been in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. In chapter 4 verse 15, Christ was not a Levite, but he qualified for a higher priesthood according to the order of Melchizedek. The superiority of Melchizedek to Levi is seen in the fact that Levi is effect, in effect paid tithes through Abraham to Melchizedek. Chapter 7 verse 9 to 10. Abraham was blessed by Melchizedek and lesser is blessed by better. Chapter 7 verse 7. The parenthetical warning in chapter 5 verse 11 and 6 verse 20 exhorts the readers to go on to perfection by moving beyond the basis of salvation and repentance. By divine oath, as we see in chapter 7 verse 21, Christ has become a per permanent and perfect high priest and the mediator of a better covenant. As we see in chapter 8 verse 6, the new covenant has made the old covenant obsolete. As we see in chapter 8 verse 6 to 13, our great high priest similarly ministers in the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation. As we see in chapter 9 verse 11, and unlike the former priest, he offers himself as a sinless and voluntary sacrifice once and for all. As we see in chapter 9 verse 1 and 10 verse 18, the superiority of the Christian walk of faith, as we see in chapter 10 verse 19 and 13 verse 25, the author applies what has been seen about the superiority of Christ by warning his readers of the danger of discarding their faith in Christ. As we see in chapter 10 verse 19 to 39, the faith that the readers must maintain is defined in chapter 11 verse 1 to 3 and illustrated in chapter 11 verse 4 to 40. The triumphs and also the accomplishment of faith in the lives of Old Testament believers should encourage the recipients of something better. As we see in chapter 11 verse 40, in Christ and to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. As we see in chapter 12 verse 2, just as Jesus endured great hostility, those who believe in him will sometimes have to endure divine discipline for the sake of holiness. As we see in chapter 12 verse 1 to 29, the readers are warned not to turn away from Christ during such times, but to place their hope in him. Important point, beloved, the readers are warned not to turn away from Christ during such times, but to take place their hope, yes, in him, yes. The character of their lives must be shaped by their dedication to Christ, as we see in chapter 13, verse 1 to 19, and this will be manifested in their love of each other through their hospitality, concern, purity, contentment, yes, and obedience, yes, beloved. The author concludes this epistle with one of the first and the finest benedictions in the scripture as we see in chapter 13 verse 20 and 21 and some personal words in chapter 13 
verses 22 to 25. Yes, beloved. Yes, as we see that the important point that also Christ is there with us, the author concludes this epistle with one of the finest benedictions in scripture as we see in chapter 13 verse 20, 21 verse and some personal words, chapter 13 verses 22 to 25. Yes, as Christ be glorified, beloved, as we see the outline of Hebrews, the part one was the superiority of Christ person. As we see in chapter 1 verse 1 to 4 verse 13. The second part is the superiority of Christ work. As we see in chapter 4 verse 14 to 10 verse 18. And the third part is superiority of Christian walk of faith. As we see in chapter 10 verse 19 and 13 verse 25. Yes, beloved, let us be encouraged as Jesus Christ is there with us every second, every moment. And for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Ishu Masiha, Jesus Christ, on the cross for us, that whosoever believeth should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 Yes, beloved. As we read in Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, God spoke and it was done. Yes, it is true, beloved. Jesus Christ is present with us every second, every moment. He is not a God of the dead but of the living and all live to him as we read in Luke chapter 20 verse 38. Yes, beloved, he has all power and authority as we read in Matthew chapter 28 and he's promised us he is with us till the end of this age. Hallelujah. Yes, beloved, what a mighty privilege we have to be the sons and daughters as of a living God and also we have the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us as a helper, as a guide. Let us receive the gifts and the fruits of Holy Spirit as we read in Galatians 5.22 and also in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Yes, beloved, we have everything at hand and also we have a loving God who is present with us. He's promised us as we read in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, He will never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, and be strong, be courageous, the word says to you and to me. Yes, do not fear, fear the not. It says to you and to me 365 times in the Bible, beloved. Yes, let us have the sword of the Lord in our hand and in our mouth as we read the mighty word from Judges chapter 7 verse 20 and Isaiah chapter 49. And the words are true as we read in Isaiah 49 verse 23. Those who hope in him will not be disappointed. Yes, beloved, the words are true. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him of them all. The words are true as we read in Psalm 34, verse 19. But the words are true as it says, O taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who waits upon him and who trusts in him. Psalm 34, verse 19. As we commit ourselves in his hands, that is in the hands of Lord Jesus Christ, he will take care of us. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, verse 6. He is the light of the world. John 8, 12. And he is the living waters. John 4, 10. Yes, beloved. The words are true as read in 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. Yes, beloved. He is our mighty God. He is our omnipotent God who reigns. Revelation 19, verse 6. And he will carry us even in our gray hair and old age. As read in Isaiah 46, verse 4. For from the beginning he knows the end, beloved. Isaiah 46 verse 10. As we have a living God with us, yes, we do not have to fear. We have to only believe. Mark 5 verse 36. He is a Yahweh Ire. God will provide. Genesis 22 verse 14. He is a Yahweh Shama. Yes, God is over there. As read in Ezekiel 48 verse 35. He is our Malekha Malekhem. King of kings, Lord of lords. He is a morning star. Yes, beloved, he will lead us, guide us and help us. Psalm 32 verse 8. And also the promise for this year for you and me. As we read in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, it says he has plans of future hope, prosperity, welfare and peace for you and me. He knows our thoughts, beloved, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. The words are true. So let us be encouraged and also let us seize the day, beloved. Yes, do not quit in life. Do not give up in life. 
for also he will heal us in the name of Yahweh Rapha. Be healed, my dear brother, my dear sister. For with the wounds and the stripes that he suffered for us, he heals us. Isaiah 53 verse 5. For he took our infirmities and carried our diseases, beloved. As we read in Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Yes, and also he will take care of us in every situation. In our hard days, in our bad days, in our good days, and also our sad days. He will fill us with joy, for the joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah 8.10 and also he will bless us with peace for he is the prince prince of peace beloved for we cannot buy these things with millions of dollars also isn't it so let us receive christ in our heart in our house as he is knocking the door of your heart and my heart a house yes he is knocking at the door of a house let us receive him and let us receive abundance of blessings there will be showers of blessing in your house and my house as we read in ezekiel 34 verse 26 yes the words are true what is the use if a man gains the whole world but loses his own soul of what profit is it the words are true beloved let us receive christ let us read the bible and meditate on his word and grow in the word yes for the word is life the word is spirit John 6 verse 63, the word is fire, the word is hammer which will break the rock into pieces. The words are true beloved, yes. Let us meditate on the word of God for it says in Psalm 112 verse 3, when we meditate on the word of God, we will have wealth and richness in a house. The words are true beloved, as we read in Job 36 verse 11, when we serve the Lord, when we obey him and also when we keep his commandments, yes beloved, we will have the pleasures all our years and prosperity all our days. Let us receive the prosperity and the blessings and the joy and the happiness and the peace. Yes, for Jesus Christ is present with us right now. Hallelujah. Yes, receive the blessings right now. My dear brother, my dear sister, my dear children, my dear youth. Yes, receive the blessings, the wisdom, for he is the fountain of wisdom, beloved. James 1 verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not. The words are true. I am his witness. I want you also to receive the blessings in abundance, for he blesses in abundance. As we read in Psalm 38 verse 6, And always say, Thy will be done. As we read the mighty word from John 6 verse 38. Yes, he will bless us abundantly. Ephesians 3.20 also says, and all his promises are yah and amen in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. So be blessed today and every day. Arise and shine is the message for you and me. Isaiah 60 verse 1. Do like and subscribe the channel. Arise and shine. Alfred Rathod and family. This is Dr. Mrs. Alfred James Rathod speaking for the channel. Yes, as for me in my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24 verse 15. Hallelujah. God bless you. Numbers chapter 6 verse 24. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.